Time to take on the thorny issue of balance. Lots of ballon baloney out there. But it does not have to be complicated. We're also going to look at several popular antennas and what ballon to use. Might not be what you expect. And by the end of the video, you'll understand what they are, why they're different, and when to use each one in your antenna system. In writing this script, I relied heavily on RF engineer Yuri Van Duren, owner of the RF Guru company in Belgium, where he manufactures antennas and ballons and other products for the amateur radio market. Take a look at his website, RF Guru, especially here. Here it is over here where it says KB, that stands for Knowledge Base. They're basically just two types of balance, current balance and voltage balance. A voltage balance is used mainly for impedance transformation. It's a transformer. A current balance is mainly used to keep RF where it belongs on the antenna and off the coax shield and out of your shack. It's an RF choke. That's the key difference between the two basic types. Now much of the confusion is because of terminology. Everything's called a ballon. But that doesn't tell you what it does. It's either an impedance transformer or a choke. Then we can decide on the ports, the inputs, and the outputs, do we need balanced or unbalanced? Well, what if the input and output are both unbalanced? Like for an N-fed or random wire fed with coax. Well, you typically use an UNIN, spelled U-N-U-N, a voltage ballon wired for two unbalanced ports. Its job is to match the impedance between the coax and the antenna. Our first antenna to discuss is a simple half-wave dipole. It's a balanced antenna and does not need impedance transformation, but it does need a current ballon. Otherwise, the coax becomes part of the antenna and unwanted RF finds its way back into the shack. Here's why. Okay, here we have a dipole antenna. There's the center insulator. This represents the inner conductor of the coax cable. This dotted line represents the inner surface of the shield. And this represents the outer surface of the shield. Now, under normal balanced operation, the signal current represented by this arrow flows on the inner conductor and the equal return current flows on the inside surface of the shield. Now the fields are fully contained within the coax, so no current flows on the outside. Everything stays quiet and symmetrical. Now when the system becomes unbalanced, the antenna is not balanced, things change because of skin effect. Skin effect, the inner and outer surfaces of the shield act as two separate conductors. This allows unwanted currents, represented by this red arrow, to appear on the outside of the coax. In effect, the coax cable now has three conductors, the inner, number one, and number two, and then number three. In transmit, these are stray return currents, part of your transmitted energy, taking a detour along the feed line and into the shack instead of staying in the antenna system. In receive, the same outer surface becomes an unintended common mode pickup path. It collects noise and interference from everything around it, feeding that back into your receiver. And that's why a current ballon 
Same thing as a coax choke at the feed point is so important. It keeps those unwanted currents where they belong, off the coax and out of your radio. Here's an effective current ballon, which you can make yourself. Now let's move on to other antennas. Off center fed dipole. Effective multi-band antenna not fed at the center, so you need an unin impedance transformer, typically four to one. Now, something about voltage balance and unins. They do not block the unwanted current on a coax shield. So a current ballon, same thing as a common mode choke, must be installed a couple of feet from the unin. But wait, can't you make a current ballon that's also a 4 to 1 impedance transformer? Yes, but Van Duren, ON6URE, advises against it because a current ballon makes a lousy impedance transformer. All right, this is from the RF Guru website. Off-center fed Wyndham dipole. A Wyndham is intentionally asymmetric, so a 4 to 1 current ballon is wrong. It fights the natural current distribution, waste power, and overheats. Use a 4 to 1 voltage ballon or unin for impedance transformation and DC grounding. Add a current choke down the coax to block common mode noise. Well, what about uh, hybrid unins that combine the impedance transformer with a current ballon? Van Doren recommends against them for transmitting except for low power. Here we are back on RF Guru, the hybrid ballon trap. Why chokes work, hybrids don't. Some antenna manufacturers promote hybrid balance, a voltage transformer with a choke wound directly on top of it. While this looks compact, is rarely the best practice for end-fed or off-center fed antennas. In most cases, a dedicated choke placed farther down the feed line performs much better. Here's why hybrids fall short. The choke sits directly at the high voltage point of the transformer. This means the choke sees extreme voltages and stress it was never designed for. It cannot properly suppress common mode current because the coax shield is still coupled to the transformer's voltage node. Any imbalance in the transformer directly leaks into the feed line, defeating the purpose of the choke. A hybrid may look elegant on paper, but electrically it mixes two functions that should be separated. All right, next antenna, the ubiquitous 80 through 10 meter end-fed half wave. Fed at the end, it has a very high impedance, so use a very good 49 to 1 unin, and Van Duren recommends three chokes. This antenna uses the outside of the coax shield as the counterpoise, so you put one choke at 13 feet from the transformer for an 80 through 10 in fed. That's your counterpoise. Put another choke before the coax enters the shack and another at the transceiver. These antennas have very high stray return currents on the outside of the coax shield and are a common source for common mode pickup. Three chokes is good. All right, next antenna, random length wire. Now, technically, random isn't the right word. With long wires, you try to avoid resonant lengths. So the antenna behaves more predictably on different bands. Still, everyone calls them random wires, so it kind of stuck. I typically use a 9 to 1 unin followed by a choke. Now keep in mind that all antennas, including the random wire, must have a counterpoise. It can be the braid of the coax as well. Well, then you need to move the choke farther away from the feed point. Same principle as used with most and fed half waves. That's the return path for RF. For any coax fed antenna, 
it's good to have an RF choke on the coax before it enters the shack. All right, finally, the quarter wave vertical. This one's easy. RF choke at or close to the feed point. Now, by now, you have an idea of how this goes, and you can apply these examples to most any antenna. Now, what about when transitioning from ladder line to coax? Van Doren recommends a one-to-one -one current ballon, not the traditional four-to-one ballon. Why? Here we are, back on RF Guru, debunking the 4 to 1 ballon myth for open wire feed lines into asymmetrical tuners. When feeding open wire line, a balanced air spaced two conductor feed line into asymmetrical unbalanced tuners, the meme always use a 4 to 1, refuses to die. It's simple advice, but it's wrong in most stations. Between a balanced line and an unbalanced tuner, you first need balance and choking, not a fixed ratio box. The workhorse here is a one-to-one -one current balance. Let the transmatch, the tuner, handle impedance transformation eternally. And finally... If your antenna tuner has a ballon, it should also be a one-to-one -one current ballon, not the typical four-to-one transformer, for the same reasons just mentioned. The tuner's output impedance varies across bands, so the typical tuner four-to-one voltage ballon only adds loss and imbalance. So, whether it's a dipole, in-fed, or vertical, the key is understanding what the feed point really needs. Balance, transformation, or isolation. Get that right and you'll keep RF where it belongs. Now, for more information, look at the website of RF Guru. Another good source is the website of RF engineer Tom Roche, W8JI. And... I am pleased to announce that I have just patented the Baloney Ballon. It gives every antenna an SWR of 1. And I am also introducing the Moon Pie Ballon. With it, you can work 80 meters with an HT antenna. Consider subscribing to this channel, ring the bell for updates, and 73.